Hello artists, today we are going to learn to create a colorful, drippy graffiti word inspired by contemporary artist Jen Stark. You're going to need a couple things for supplies today, some paper, crowns, scissors, and if you have a black marker, that might be useful too, but if not, using a black crown is perfectly fine as well. Here's me doing our project today in super fast mode. We are going to be learning some techniques for shading with our crowns to create value with lights and darks. And this is gonna make your artwork look a lot more three-dimensional and realistic. You've probably used crowns hundreds of times um, and they often get ignored as a boring art supply, but you can do some amazing stuff with them if you just know how to use them correctly. There's two really important things that I want you to um, pay attention to for this project. And the first one is craftsmanship, which is creating slowly, carefully, and thoughtfully. So your artwork is neat and it shows your best effort. So we're not rushing or scribbling here. And the second is value. That's shading with lights and darks to make an artwork appear more 3D. So let's look at how to do that with our crowns today. The first step to creating value is to look for a light and dark shade of the color you are using. I'm going to start with green and I found a few different shades of crowns that I could use. Now if you do not have different shades of the same color, it's okay. You can still create value by using pressure. So having pressure on your crown, pushing down hard, that's going to create a dark value, while gentle pressure, pressure on your crown is going to make a lighter value. So notice I'm using gentle pressure with this middle green, and then with my dark green, I'm pressing down harder. Crowns look best when you layer them and you blend them. So you need to keep going back and forth between your different colors, okay? So I keep switching between my light green and my dark green, and notice how I'm putting the dark values at the bottom of the drip to show where those blobs have a shadow on them. I'm going back with my light green, I'm pushing down hard and blending those colors together because when you blend, it takes away that scratchiness of the crown, makes it look nice and smooth like a liquid paint drip. I also sometimes like to get out a white crown. A white crown can be a really great blender if you use it to push down hard and blend back over top all the colors that you've done. Um, it smooths them together again to get rid of that scratchiness and just to make it look a little more um, fluid. If you want to practice these techniques before you start to work on your real thing, I really recommend drawing out a sphere on a blank piece of paper. So I've collected a couple different shades of blues and purples here. I'm going to show you really quickly how to change this flat circle into a three-dimensional looking sphere with shadows. So you have to decide on which side of your sphere is going to be the shadowed side. So I'm going to make the shadow side on the bottom right here. So I'm going with my darker blues and I'm using heavy pressure, pushing down hard to make that shadow on the bottom half of my sphere. You can use dark purples, dark blue, and then as you go to the upper left part of your sphere, you're going to use light pressure and a lighter blue color. Keep going through, switching back and forth between colors and blending and layering up everything. Of course this takes some patience, but remember we're practicing our craftsmanship today, so we're uh, creating thoughtfully and slowly so that our artwork is our very best effort.
You can also create value by using similar colors in a color family. So let's try warm colors. Um, I'm gonna start with my lightest value in the family, which would be yellow. And I'm coloring over everything with that yellow, just using a light pressure. Um, Cause I'm going to go back with the darker shades and start blending. So next I'm gonna pick up my orange and using gentle pressure, I'm starting to blend in to my yellow. Remember, the farther down you go on your drip, the darker it will be. My darkest values are red, orange, and red, so I'm going around the bottom of the drips now using a heavier pressure. And with my red crown, I'm pushing down the hardest right on the edge there, right along the line to make that shadow. And then once I've got all my values on there, to blend it all together and get rid of all that scratchiness and to make it look smooth, I'm going back to my lightest color, which is my yellow. I'm pushing down very hard to get those colors blended back together. The first step for your project is that you are going to draw a word at the top. You could do any word that you like, or you could even do your first or last name. First, draw it out in pencil, just some simple stick letters, then go around it with your marker or your crown. Feel free to make the letters touch each other and overlap. This is gonna make it look a lot more bubbly, a lot more like graffiti. Once you've got those letters drawn at the top of your paper, then you can do the squiggly lines, which make the drips. Make sure you've got lots of squiggly lines inside of each other, overlapping, and move them down your paper. After you color this, you're gonna be cutting it out to make it look even more drippy. Have fun and do your best. I know you will do amazing things with this project.